nervousness, I'm probably going to do it really fast. And um, it started out as a series of Facebook statuses. And it started out, I can't do it here, I was going to do this, but I was going to have peanut butter, and then I didn't have any utensils in my house, so I used a deconstructionist method, a post-situationist method, of using something that is um, used in oriental food. It's like a ladle spoon, and I had to eat peanut butter like that. So that's the inspiration for this. And it's hallucinatory, it goes out of control. But Well, you see, the thing is, guys, is what separates me from the petite bourgeois is that when I have no utensils to use, I approach it with a situationist, deconstructionist, post-deconstructionist, post-situationist, dialectic inference. Are you keeping up? <laughs> uh, that means I can hold in my hands a stunning plastic utensil of the Orient that actually holds up better, which means I have destroyed the universal concept of how to get peanut butter out the best. Knife, spoon, fork? Actually, when I think about this, I start thinking about those pulp novels that those funny skinhead ones, some drunk bastard in Sheffield wrote. How petty. I want direct action, meaning having my peanut butter right now, as if I will waste my precious bodily fluids for something when an alternative that is plastic will do just fine. Sure, the handle of it bucks a little, but I think that is the proof that is in the pudding, which actually means this is war on peanut butter, anti-democratic legions all across the world. See, it's funny, I'm actually getting huge vibes right now that say, like, this is the concept of the hero overcoming impossible odds. And actually, if I use deconstructionist mind tricks, which is my rap name coming up, uh, peanut butter is simply peanuts or butter, but not both, but they are exclusive forces that depend on each other, but for the sake of cultural progression, let us say they are the same, but different. See, the great thing about these states of minds and being is that I can make it up as I go. It's relieving to be your own congressperson because you can write to yourself anytime you are never alone or wondering when you'll get a reply, which of course you'll never get. Be free. Be peanut. Be peanut butter. Don't seek the utensil. Let it become mass-produced in a factory for you to wage clubbish, byronic, cultured thuggery upon the class divisions. Oh, who am I, you ask? Why, well, I'm the executor of Ezra Pound's estate. His new headstone reads, quit, quit pimping your self-image out, you skank. Granted, I wrote that myself. It has nothing to do with Ezra Pound. But there is no such grievous power as holding the everlasting fortune of another famous human being that I've been able to see yet. I changed around a lot of his input recently. There are now large yellow smiley faces on every cover of every forthcoming collection of Ezra's vast catalog at three quarters. Will the real cubists please stand up? Will the real images please stand up? To quote proletariat philosopher Eminem, I'm T.S. Eliot, yeah, I'm the T real T.S. Eliot, so all you T.S. Eliot's were just imitating, etc., etc., etc. Will the real Boris's please stand up? Maybe a real Marxist philosopher? My wars are not, fun, are not fought with guns or blades, but by slapping my opponent absolutely fucking silly. <laughs> Wyndham Lewis is our line too for you, and Mr. Wyndham Lewis, I have a splendid cataloged itinerary of democratic processing units called politicians. Yo, Marinetti for president 2016. The cat my brother had whose neck was snapped by the large front door in front of my house for local selectmen. I ate pigs off last night as a harsh criticism against liberal capitalist militant egalitarianism, but due to the no win bet of the system, I'm not forced to eat pigs off. I've just chosen to. But deep inside, I know I've been forced because it's the only absolute cosmopolitan psychology of this wretched <laughs> bastard of a system that makes me feel as though I must do that. Wyndham Lewis said peanut butter's for the herd, and that makes me feel as though that some, a lesser man could kill himself eating too much, his mouth shut together with peanut-based zip ties, which are actually just the spread itself. He thinks that if one were to die from asphyxiation from peanut butter, all the better, because he prefers jam or eating a raw item like a bagel raw. Raw as in, with nothing on it. Ezra Pound stuck peanut butter cups into those fucking cages of Italy when he was captured. His speeches, grandly politically incorrect and voraciously bullshit-esque, were actually just a text-to-speech robot created by AT&T. He pleaded with the Allies to simply just Google it, but of course, a system which created Google wouldn't know what Google was, except on D-Day, which was partially a sham because the infantry received iPads the day before. All the front line knew how to Google was assembling at one grand, what is a stick grenade, and all kinds of other nonsense. When he returned home, albeit stuck in a sanitarium, he started a contract to revise the, do the Google doctrine, an important revolutionary document which states that Google, like peanut butter, is an open playing field that goes forward and gets harks backwards. It's the perfect futurist document. Embrace the past and the future. Beautiful. Where Ezra and I part ways, however, is that he is more of a man of the metaphysically objective. Like, he'd say peanut butter is both peanut and butter. Bullshit. My inner revolutionary, the Molotov cocktail in my heart, says deconstruct, disassemble, question what is told to you. That's why this peanut butter is both peanut singularly and butter singularly. In control of my destiny, I can say without batting an eye that I can make this peanut butter anything that I want it to be. 
And the way I ingest it is even more so up to me and in my hands. If you ask Derrida, famous philosopher of bullshit, he'd say peanut butter isn't even real. And it's more than likely a product of ninny tub thumping drumbeat fascism. So this here is my destiny. In the name of individual liberty and peanut butter and personal existential tenacity, I can marry this peanut butter. Marriage is nothing more than economic corning for some big buck fat cat and comedian. Getting vibes that point in my general direction right now, like, uh, hey, I could be roomies with this peanut butter. Smoke a few blunts, uh, dinner party session maybe. Probably have a few small parties, a few big ones too, but just like invite only for really good friends. But if you think I'm being funny right now, or a comic strip, or something, then you simply do not register the perfect home run of anarcho syndicalist deconstructionist, disestablishmentarian, peanut butter revolutionary direct action. This is my peanut butter. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Not. This is my peanut butter, and there is no other like it on the planet. And actually, it's mine and everybody else's, and it's all yours. But let us step back from the political really quick. Let us examine my status in regards to sexuality. Yes, I can already see the wriggling eel amongst you now. If I go back into my sexual catalog, my sexual history, I get little droplets of Dasad mixed in. For example, I was playing on the schoolyard as a young boy. The object of interest was to chase girls, and that was the normative operation for the boys. Although I'm sure I executed normative behavior due to my pea brain, I can now look back in anger and deconstruct meaning of how my sexual nature landscape was designed. One moment presents itself clearly, where I still hold on to the dream from time to time. It's sort of quasi-romanticism involving a girl who gave me an, an underarm cut jab move that collided squarely with my testicles. Granted, the pain was a great deal. I remember being very ill in regards to this strange pain. Rather, I felt empowered, though. It gave me such a tickle that I chased the same girl again with the overwhelming arch of the first blow. It left me hazy, and it gave me this rather curious rush again. But in my adult life, I made a switch. It is clear that in my schoolyard days, I was a Lincoln Log masochist, easily persuaded by the forces of nature. But really, when I look at it now with new eyes, deconstructed optical lenses, which are available at every Walmart, I was training on becoming the sadist that I am now. It is reasonable to assume a proper elite sadist would need to consume considerable degrees of pain to understand what a masochist feels. Therefore, I will not submit myself to being labeled as a masochist unfairly. I was simply a sadist in training. When Saad <laughs> lap danced my brain during my freshman year of high school, I felt like I was getting some sort of pulpy, anarchistic, proto existentialist fascist, Jerry Springer, compulsive masturbation education, a higher calling amongst the dreg of society. I didn't need Saad's stained hand guiding to see the corruption that had befallen me, the cultural disconnection that I already felt was heightened by Saad. But I felt like a mystery outlaw, a quantum gangster, the enemy. I would propose situationist ethic in my sex life, which during high school was laughable, yet full of perversion, beautiful non-sex sex, deconstructed nature of sex rattling the cages of my senses, and then when I blossomed sexually, I always kept a little bit of sod with me during these experiences. 